The iPhone 14 and the 14 Pro. Phones lauded by some both positively and negatively when looking at the year-on-year -year improvements that Apple have made. But is that right? Should each phone be compared with its predecessor so strictly? And in reality, do Apple really want you upgrading every year? This is what I've got at the moment. This is an iPhone 13 Pro, and for me, it's the best phone I've ever used. I had a long think when I was watching the iPhone 14 keynote, and I was very tempted and very close to getting the new iPhone 14 Pro. While the iPhone 14 was never an option, because for me, only my first Pro phone with this iPhone 13 Pro, I don't think I'll ever be happy with the regular model ever again. And that's not me saying the regular model is or ever will be a bad choice, because no matter how many versions or few Future variations down the line, it's still going to be one of the best phones that Apple make. It's becoming more and more apparent that across the board of phone manufacturers that once they've got their core design or it's within their design cycle, then very little will ever change year on year. And the iPhone 14 range is the same. For me, the iPhone 14s aren't really there for people who have one of the previous year's iterations like the me with the iPhone 13, because in comparison, there isn't really much difference. And the only things that generally does improve is the technology and maybe adding a few new features too. Let's have a brief look at my point in question. Realistically, should I upgrade the iPhone 13 Pro to an iPhone 14 Pro? Simply, the answer is no. But let's explore why by looking first at the background facts. I got this on launch day 2021, so it's just over a year old. And as I said before, it's the best phone I've ever had. And in my use as a normal person using the phones, not to test or review them, I've had 24 phones in 22 years, which to me sounds like a lot. And it all started with the Nokia 5110. I don't think in the world as it is today, the majority of people who have had a phone for 12 months or so should be looking at an upgrade if they're happy and content with what they've got. And yes, there are exceptions to this rule, like people where money is no object, or people with the mindset of it's trendy to have the latest and greatest, or with creators who enjoy creating and showing you guys, including myself, videos of these new products so you can make informed decisions about whether it's a good choice for you. And in truth, if I was in the position to be able to buy the latest phone every year, then I would, and often thanks to trading programs, that's a genuine possibility for some people. Under the layer of the fancy gimmicks of new hardware and features, your use and experience of the current iOS is going to be the same from one iPhone to the next. And for me, that ease of use and transition is what keeps me within the ecosystem and effectively makes it difficult to come out. Let's look at the current OS, iOS 16. It's compatible with every iPhone down to the iPhone 8, which was released five years ago. And a lot feature-wise has happened in that five years. Just remember, the iPhone 8 was the last iPhone to have a home button. The iOS experience of the day-to-day -day user of an iPhone 8 is more or less going to be the same as someone using an iPhone 14. Yes, the 14 is quicker, has a better camera and other things, but what Apple prides itself is the familiarity across all of its devices. Now let's bring things back to the iPhone 13 Pro and see how it compares to its new sibling. On the surface, apart from those obvious differences, they share a load of similarities, but it's those notable upgrades that will make or break your decision where it's a good idea to swap to the iPhone 14 Pro. And remember, any minor notable upgrades from the 13 to the 14 is an even greater scale depending on how old your device is that you're coming from. Switching from the A15 to A16 Bionic chip, which is the normal annual upgrade we always see, where the latest phone with the latest chip technology is going to be quicker, more efficient, and more powerful supporting those other upgrades that require the beefed up chip. The screens on both utilize a Super Retina HDR display and ProMotion technology, but the 14 has a greater peak and outdoor brightness than the 13, and has thinner borders, which results in the 14 having a taller aspect ratio, which again is minor and something that you'll you get used to whichever phone that you have. The 14 now has always on display, or put it more accurately, Apple's version of always on display. Depending on who you watch or what articles you read, you'll see a selection of pros and cons regarding the always on display and its impact on the improved battery capacity of the iPhone 14. But it's a first generation always on display and things can only get better and more refined because that's the Apple way. Instead of the notch which features on the regular 14 and 14 Plus, on the 14 Pros there is a now a pill shaped cutter or the dynamic island, which gives you a new way of interacting with your phone and just like the always on display is very much Apple's version of we need to do something with a pill shaped cutout that makes it different from the rest of the cutouts out there and they've done exactly that. 
Now, if I'm honest, this was the one feature where I thought, that's amazing. I need this iPhone Pro right now, as soon as possible. Thankfully, I let the hype of that moment cool down into a much more controlled appreciation of how much I actually like the technology. For me, one of the most important features of a modern phone is the ability to take photos and the quality of those photos. I like taking pictures with my iPhone 13 Pro and sometimes it's so easy to opt for the phone instead of the camera because I have full faith in what I shoot from the iPhone is gonna be nine times out of 10, it's gonna be exactly what I wanna see. And yes, there are still occasions where I'm only gonna opt for my camera. But for the day-to-day -day stuff and sometimes for the more professional looking stuff, the output, what you get from one of these is awesome. This year, there's an all new 48 megapixel main camera, which places the 12 megapixel one, which people have been asking for for ages, with a sensor that is 65% larger than this one on here, which means in theory, the shots and zoom shots are gonna be contain more detail, to which some people, the extra sharpening may in fact make the image not as appealing. The low light images are showing a noticeable year on year improvement, and this year is no exception. The other notable minor camera improvements are the two times zoom now available in portrait mode and the front selfie camera has a brighter lens and now supports autofocus. You might remember a couple of years ago when Apple introduced the iPhone 11 and the photography feature and its new deep fusion feature which uses computational photography using advanced machine learning of the A13 chip. Well, in addition to this and armed with their new photography buzz term, the iPhone 14 Pros have Photonic Engine, which also utilizes computational photography, utilizing hardware, machine learning, and software to make the overall look of low light shots even better. These amazing sounding new features are all gonna make photos look better, but as the average person carrying one of these in their pocket who is upgraded from an iPhone 13 Pro gonna notice? Probably not. Video wise, there are a few improvements, but for me, the most notable one is that action mode. Getting smooth, stabilized footage means that you won't have to buy one of these expensive things. If there's a camera feature that I'd love to see across the board for all manufacturers, that would be some form of, let's use Apple's own wording of computational photography that can actually produce true skin colors for multiple people of different races in within one shot. I do suffer from sometimes being in one shot and being the one that you can't see. So I'd love that to be corrected fully in the future. Although Google, with their real tone technology, are taking genuine steps in the right direction by making it their mission to make camera and image products work more inclusively for everyone, so good work. The other two main headline features of the iPhone 14 range is that inclusion of satellite SOS and crash detection. One feature the majority of people will never use and the other a feature nobody hopes to use. But it is reassuring that in the background that if something were to happen to me in a car or on a roller coaster, then in emergency, if I was unable to, then it would call the emergency services. Great features, good improvements, but in reality, is it enough for me to justify upgrading from this iPhone 13 Pro? Probably not, but for me, I'm not the target audience for this. The people who would be tempted by this were the ones that are coming up to the end of their 24 month carrier contracts if they've got an iPhone 12. The ones who've got anything older than a 12, say looking at this iPhone 5C, or if someone's got anything later than something like this, you know, the ones where the phones are no longer supported by the latest iOS upgrades. And of course, those people who don't have an iPhone already and are using something like an Android phone. I'll use me as an example. I got this Apple Watch Series 7 a few months ago. Now, while the Series 8 doesn't appeal to me, because there are even fewer differences between this and the 8, I previously had the Series 3. But when Apple at WWDC announced WatchOS 9 and said that they were withdrawing the latest updates and OS for the Series 3, there was a justification to get the new watch. And I became the target audience in one of those categories for buying the Series 7, which I did. Same for the iPhone. I'm on a 24 month contract with this one that ends at the release of the iPhone 15 range. And that's probably most likely when I'll be upgrading. So like others, I'm on a two year cycle. So always, once I get a new one, I'm always two years away from getting my next phone. Most likely gonna be always be an iPhone, which I'll trade in with Apple, just like I did with my previous iPhone 11 to get this one and save money on the next one. 
Apple and other manufacturers know exactly what they're doing. Yes, probably they have the next few years of technology already right now, but in an effort to prevent the year-on-year -year releases being perceived as stale, which some people may say that they have already reached that point, they're going to drip feed those technologies through year by year. And now we're seeing the clear differences in the change of mindset and approach by Apple creating a noticeably different iPhone 14 and the 14 Pro range. Seems to be marketed if you're a regular user wanting the up-to-date technology at an affordable flagship price then choose the iPhone 14 or 14 Plus. But if you want to take that even further with better photography, more innovative features that build upon the regular 14 then choose the iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max. For now I'll just be sticking with the best phone ever that I've ever had for one more year. If you enjoyed this type of video let me know in the comments below and while you're there tell me your thoughts on upgrading to the iPhone 14 or 14 Pro if you're having a dilemma. Thanks for watching, press the like button and think about subscribing to the channel if you already haven't and I'll see you in the next one.